Hello guys, this is Jack from Fox Tech. Today I'm going to show you a new radio and maybe some one of you may be familiar with this one. And this is a Fox Tech DA16. And this is the newest version, uh, DA16S Plus. Well, the main change is actually the firmware change and also the change of the receiver. And the receiver becomes a little bit bigger and we actually fix some error in the power management model built inside. So actually the whole receiver will be a little bit bigger than before, but more reliable and also more range. Okay, let me show you some detail about the radio. So uh, this is the DA16X Plus receiver and you can see it's a little bit bigger but uh, you can still put inside of this canopy. Uh, well, uh, here we can see two of the receiver antennas. Actually, they are uh, receiver antennas and also transmitter antennas because this one has the dual-way data link. So uh, here we can see here we have um, data cable directly connect to the tele port of on, on PixTalk and then we have a S bus directly output to the S bus input of the PixTalk uh, flight controller. So this is all wires we need to connect with the PixTalk. It's very easy. Okay, so you can see uh, here's already connected. Let's move to the radio side. So what I have seen is the DA16S Plus radio. It has 16 channels and with the touch screen, you can set all the functions of the radio. Uh, you can see two uh, subtrain switches here, up and down, but it's normally disabled because we are using it to operate drones. Then all subtrain should be done in the mission planner or in the software of a ground station. Well, you can see there are four three position switches. And on the side, we can see a NAND holding switch like this, and also a holding switch to position, and a, a auto centering uh, wheel. So we can use this one to control the gimbal of the drones. And on this side, they are all the same. Still, a two switches and one wheel. On the back, we can see our two switch. It's also a NAND holding switch and one press, so it turns like uh, doing some sound function. Well, here is a big uh, battery, that will say a power on button, power off, power on, in this way. Well, it has many sockets like this. Well, it has the micro USB, the data, and the AUSB, and the data too. And uh, these uh, ports are used for the trainer functions. Well, okay. Uh, so you may ask how can I connect the radio receiver of DX16 to the pad just like that as you can see we are using a pad and uh, we're launching the software of uh, Q ground control and we can use this software to operate uh, functions to set the parameters in the plane in the drones and then how do I connect the radio to this one? Because the DA16 also has the Bluetooth and also has the data link function inside. Well, we just simply, um, for example, we have to add the Bluetooth. Sorry, it's uh, all in Chinese. So Bluetooth, because uh, I, I can check the Bluetooth ID in the setting like this. So it's uh, coming with the number of uh, 6496. Uh, so we can see 6496 here is already paired. So we go to the Q ground control and then we press, then we choose the common link. And as I already added this one into the connection list. And then I try connect. So you can see here it's a small bar, like a reading bar here, uh, showing it is uh, connecting. And uh, after it's all done, it's all connected. So the basic data link is to then go from the plane to the radio receiver and uh, using the data link to transit all the signals here and then use the Bluetooth to connect with the pad or with your cell phone. So you can see all the parameters everything you can see is here and we can see the all the 
um, maybe position, um, the attitude of your plane. So it's all connected, all set. So when you want to see the video, we have actually have another version of the DX16 that can show the video, but it's for like a later on product. Well, let's see here. Actually, uh, we can see two auto centering uh, sticks like this. So we can use the sticks. Let's see, let's say turn on the radio here. So we can see all the stick moving and also the definition of each stick. So when I push to the right, the roll moves, go up, and then the pitch moves. So we are now using the controlling mode 2 and if you are familiar with the mode 1, it's very easy to just prioritize this one. You can change to mode 1, then you have this one, this stick to be the throttle and this one to be the pitch. It can be changed so easily. Well, um, you can see here in the touch screen, we can set all the functions you need. And normally you just need this one. This is the actually the data link status. And from here, from the basics, basic, we can see the device Bluetooth ID and how you want to link the pad or the cell phone or the even the laptop with your radio. We can choose Bluetooth, then if you change it, I can change to micro USB. So you can use the micro USB to connect to my pad, to my cell phone, or to the laptop. So it's very easy. And uh, by the time we change the link method, you can see the connection here is is uh, connect is uh, disconnected. So we can see, we can change, change to A USB, the big, big USB port, and we can change back to Bluetooth. So in this case, we have to connect again. So here we can also see some like data status. We can see the link quality with your radio, with your radio receiver. We can see everything here. So from the advanced setting, we can see we can change the baud rate. So it can make the radio receiver and also the data link built inside to work with different kinds of flight control or different port. Okay, from here, you want to check the channel. You can go here so you can see all the channels moving, definition of the sticks of the switches. And then here, you can select up to 100 models. You can uh, save them uh, beforehand. Well, model type, you can choose uh, different kinds of model type. But uh, normally, we just use the fixed model. And endpoint, it to set the endpoint for different kind of stick, switches, and also the switch here, the button here. And also channel mapping, you can uh, map this uh, ailerons, let's say joystick one, two, three, four. Uh, you can map the output with the sticks or even with the switches. And if you want to go to the next page, just a slide forward. So you can change to next page. It's also very easy. You can also reverse your channel from here. It's also very easy to, to set a reverse and a normal. And then the sub trim, and trim setting, fail safe, trainer mode, the out of... Uh, well, what I want to show you is uh, actually the fly mode. The fly mode is a function we specially designed for any Seeing that any plane or drones using the Pixhawk, because uh, normally Pixhawk has uh, actually has um, six control mode or six fly mode. But if you use a three position switch, you can only use three. So here, if we want to turn on the function, then we choose on, and then we can choose uh, which channel. Normally, it's the channel eight because we are using uh, Nimbus and then we can uh, use the first switch. Let's choose switch C as the fourth switch. And then the second switch is actually for uh, changing all the three mode to the next group. So normally we use this uh, actually stopping switch. Simple and super simple mode. Okay, 
So as see here, I put the switch back. So we can see here it's the change to the stabilize, and uh, then I press switch. I go to simple and then go to auto, go to land, and then I move the switch again, and you can see it change back to the the first control or flying mode groove. So with the combination of the three position switch and also this uh, stopping switch right here, you can change to up to six fly mode in this way. It's very easy. So here we can also see a timer. Uh, normally when you fly a like a good plane, uh, which consume power greatly, maybe can only fly five minutes, you need a timer. Well, uh, when we go to a system setting, well, normally we change our control, the joystick mode in here, my third two, three, custom, or mode one. I'm familiar with mode one. And then we can change the language between English and also the Chinese. Okay, from here we can change to use the voice on, voice off, uh, vibration on, vibration off. Yeah. Okay. So we still have a lot of functions but uh, you can just check the menu for it. Well, in the radio setting, uh, we can see the signal coming from the S-Bus, and we can also uh, arrange the PWM setting to uh, assign uh, different channels on the radio receiver with a different channel of output here. And the voltage, since the DA16 S plus receiver has the voltage reading function, so we can have the voltage calibration here. Okay, let's see. If you want to change the controlling and the data range of your DA16 S plus, it's uh, also very easy. You can go to the system, and here is the power ratio. You can see here, the default output power is 27 dBm. It's considerably big. It's like 400 milliwatt. And also, you can change here, and if you change, it can change both the transmit power from the radio and also the receiver to 10 dBm. It's like kind of a very low output. But even with the 10 dBm, our D16S Plus can go up to 1.5 km. Okay, let's change it back. So with the full uh, output, the 27 dBm, the maximum control and also the data range of this radio and the receiver is up to 8 km. So this is kind of uh, quite enough for those people who do the mapping job. Well, this is a brief introduction about Foxx new radio. It's a DA16S Plus. And here we can also have the pad, cell phone, uh, holder right here so we can put the pad directly on the radio and if we want to link to the uh, laptop you can also use either Bluetooth or the USB cable so very very handy very easy radio with all the functions you need with a good range up to 8 km so I can say this is actually a perfect one for people who want to do the mapping or want to practice uh, the drones the veto and the multicopter it can also help you to save the money, put on the data link, or put on a decent radio booster. So this is all in one. And I have to also mention, with the good built-in battery, the duration of the radio is up to 10 hours. Well, this is quite impressive, because in 10 hours, we can do a lot of job uh, without charging the battery. Okay, so this is everything. I hope you like this radio. And if you like it, you can find it on the foxtechfpv.com, the website. And also, if you like our Facebook, YouTube, or maybe Twitter, just don't forget to subscribe us. This is Jack from Foxtech. A brief introduction about the radio DA16S+. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next one.